Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Tuesday, the 29th day of March, year of our Lord, 2022. I do pray this finds you well this evening. Cool day out there, a little bit warmer tomorrow. Supposed to get some rain, although I looked at the radar a while ago and didn't see any coming, but uh, you know, uh, it's accurate, right? So we all know that. So anyway, again, I do pray this finds you well. Uh, Holy Week is coming. Uh, we have this weekend and then the weekend of Palm Sunday. And then finally, on April 17th, the great feast of the resurrection, Easter Sunday. Uh, pay attention to the services. That's a, it's a good time for us to witness by our actions uh, that week. Uh, it's always a good time for us to witness by our actions. But that week, plenty of opportunities to, to uh, gather as God's people and uh, show our uh, love for the Lord in that way and receive his gifts Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, some churches, and I've been toying with this for a number of years, but having a service on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of Holy Week as well. Uh, you know, that's been a tradition for a long time. We've kind of got out of practice of gathering regularly uh, for church, uh, especially during those high high uh, feast times of the year, Easter being top of that list. So something to think about, but remember, Monday, Thursday, we have two services on Good Friday. We have the chief service. I believe there's a tray or for uh, somewhere in the circuit as well. It's a three-hour service of Ben Emanuel. My church, we decided to do the chief service um, on Friday afternoon. Uh, so you can come to that or go to the tray or, or uh, and then at that evening at 7 p.m. we have the vigil, or the vigil, the uh, Canterbury Vespers, the service of darkness. And then Holy Saturday, we have the vigil of Easter. That's also uh, in the evening. It's the first celebration of Easter, and then finally two services on the Feast of the Resurrection, very early sunrise service, followed by uh, Easter breakfast in the cafeteria, and then after that, uh, the great Feast of the Resurrection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. To herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And we turn again, following the daily lectionary, to the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. And tonight we read verses 13 through 27. And they sent to him some of the Pharisees and some of the Herodians to trap him in his talk. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are true and do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances, but truly teach the way of God. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay them, or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, he said to them, Why put me to the test? Bring me a denarius, and let me look at it. And they brought one, and he said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said to him, Caesar's. Jesus said to them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. And the Sadducees came to him, who say that there is no resurrection. And they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife, but leaves no child, the man must take the widow and raise up offspring for his brother. There were seven brothers. The first took a wife, and when he died, left no offspring. And the second took her and died, leaving no offspring. And the third likewise, and the seventh left no offspring. Last of all, the women also died. In the resurrection, when they rise again, whose wife will she be? For the seven had her as a wife. Jesus said to them, Is this not the reason you are wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For when they rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the dead being raised, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the passage about the bush, how God spoke to him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. You are quite wrong. And that is the, the gospel of the Lord. So, these are very, again, he is in Jerusalem for the last time, and now, now the chief priests send to him the Pharisees and the Herodians. 
uh, to try to test them. You know, try to test God. Go ahead. See how that goes for you. And people try to do that kind of nonsense all the time. Uh, try to put God in a logical box. Uh, uh, they can't even put themselves in a logical box, let alone God. Um, and, you know, Jesus answers all these old, old, all these questions with this statement. Uh, uh, as the, This would be the second test when the, fair, the Sadducees come to him who deny the resurrection. He says, is this not the reason you are wrong? Because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. You know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. You, you, you really, my brothers and sisters, you, you have to have a good knowledge of the Bible. Um, and if you don't, okay. I mean, granted, you know, you, you're busy. Uh, and it's my job to have a, a good knowledge of the Bible, you know, as a pastor. Of course, it's easier for me to say these things to you because I am immersed in the Word every day. But how are you going to know if what I'm teaching is right if you don't know what the Word says? And how do you keep yourself from cherry-picking what you want to believe unless you know the Word of God and know the context? Well, I can quote verses to you. And I remember uh, I got in a little bit of a, uh, a, and this is a good thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. With one of my brothers in office, uh, we are talking about Christian education and and. You know that the problem with just simply proof texting. Now, now, please, please, know the Bible, and you should be able to quote many verses. But you, it, it goes beyond that. You have to know the context. You have to know, you know, speaking of the letters of Paul, why they were written, who they were written to, uh, you know, what, you know, again, why, what was the occasion, what's the argument he's dealing with, if any. Um, and then, you know, that'll help you see that one little passage clearly more clearly. So I remember this discussion with my brother in office and he started throwing out proof texts and I, I guess to be a little snarky but to prove my point just started throwing out completely opposite proof texts. And I knew I was wrong, he knew I was wrong, but, but my point was was that we could do this all day. Throw proof texts at each other. That's what's happening here. You know, and Jesus says, you don't know scripture. You, and, and so, okay, so, so my church body we rightly confess infant baptism, uh, God's real presence in the Lord's Supper. Um, and if you're not Lutheran and listen to this, you know you, you have to deal with that, um, uh, that we, we disagree on this. And you can always ask me privately. I'll teach you with, uh, everything I know uh, on the subject. But, uh, you know, let, let's look at the one about baptism and baptism saving you. We, we are not a church that requires people to make a decision for Christ. Uh, scripture doesn't require that. Um, I get where that comes from, and it makes somewhat logical sense. Unfortunately, it's not scriptural. And when you, you know, but you can find these texts, and that's what happens. We end up talking past each other, quoting text after text. What we have to do is take a step back and look at scripture as a whole. And say, okay, how has God always dealt with his people? You know, you're from the call of Abraham, well, from the creation of it all. Uh, from, but I'm thinking of the call of Abraham. You know, he, Abraham is, he, he calls Abraham. Uh, what what is circumcision? How old is that? You know, all, uh, you know how who? You know, I think when he when he makes the covenant with Abraham, you know, Abraham just sits there. He's God who who makes and ratifies himself the covenant. We don't. You know, you know, how does salvation come to us? You know, it is a gift. And most people would say that, but we don't hang anything on it. It's a gift, all right? So even you know, like we see the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the Herodians, you know, within the Christian Church, there are various confessions is the right word, denominations is a little weak, but confessions, we confess something a little bit different. I'm not saying that Lutherans are going to be the only ones in heaven. Uh, you don't say that either, if you're not Lutheran to listen to this. I'm saying we have disagreements, and they're significant. All right, And the only way we can solve those agreement, disagreements is not proof text each other until we're blue in the face, you know, because uh, we're just going to keep talking past each other, but to back up and take a look at Scripture and say, how does how has God always saved people? You know, what is he doing? Uh, why is he doing it? You know, do we have a role in this? And, it, and when does that happen? How does that happen? That's where we find the answers. Uh, and it's work. You know, you, you got to dig into the word. You got to spend time in it. You can't, you know, I've had way too many Lutherans come and sit in my office, way too many, and say, well, you know, you know God never says, uh, you know, you know, there's no record of an infant being baptized. Well, what do you do with circumcision? You know, and what do you know about the, the, the early church and the practice of the early church that's well recorded for us uh, outside of Scripture? Uh, you, know, you, you don't know anything. Um, yet you're willing because you want to believe something else to, to just sit there and argue with me until we're blue in the face. 
No, but I have to do it. I have to make you. I have to make you back up. So it's interesting what Jesus said. It's not the reason you are wrong. You know, is this not the reason you are wrong? Because you you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. You know, Jesus is you know, back up knowing. Uh, you trust your pastors to do that, and by God's grace, we do. But what if we get it wrong? You know, you you have to. You're you're the you're the gatekeeper in that sense. Um, uh, you know the creeds are good a, a good first line of defense, but still. You know I remember the saints of Berea recorded for us in the book of Acts, when Paul came and it was, you know, a new teaching to them, the new song of Christ our Lord, the New Testament, still you know, being recorded, uh, in the infancy of it being recorded. And of course they 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 listen to Paul, they respect what he says, but they. You know, they go back and search scripture and say, yes, he's right. Do that. Do that. And do it when you think of something and you think, oh, you know, uh, uh, you know, this is what I believe and this is what I feel. You know, if you heard my sermon from a couple weeks ago, I don't care what you feel. I mean, am I a feeling person? Yes. And, and do I have concern over your feelings? Of course. But when it comes to what we confess, your feelings make no difference. It's what this says. I'm looking down at the book. You know, we have to know Scripture and the power of God. We see it there. We see it there. Very interesting. And this one final point. Um, uh, and these texts, you know, it's Lent. Can you tell? Uh, but uh, these texts are, you know, they, they wake us up, don't they? Um, from our sort of uh, uh, lackadaisical slumber when it comes to the Word of God and what we're willing to believe or not believe because it's inconvenient for us. But the Sadducees who, you know, just give him this ridiculous test about well, who's going to be married in heaven. He says, you know, and remember, I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago, God's kind of closed-lipped about it. Actually, he's very closed-lipped about heaven, except it's going to be wonderful, and he himself will wipe the tears from our eyes. Just rest on that. Because we're fallen. How can we possibly know what it's going to be like in our fallen state? Other than, he says, it's going to be wonderful. We want to make it more of this. He's going to make it perfect. All right. Um, we want to, you know, do what we want to do. He's going to say, no, you know, you're going to be with me in the presence of God forever. It's going to be wonderful. And so Jesus reminds us that, yes, there will be a resurrection. People ask this kind of, these kinds of questions all the time. You know, oh, what if a guy's married three times? You know, for, and I've known people like that. Wonderful saints of the church get married, love their wife for 25, 30 years, or their husband, their spouse dies. And they get married again. Love that one just as much as they love the first. Uh, 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 just like you do with your children. If you have multiple children, you love them all the same, right? You know, there's not one more than the other. Uh, might look differently at times, but you love them the same. Anyway, uh, you know, and, and people say, well, which one is going to be in heaven? It's like, Dude, I don't know. You know. I'm not God. God says it's going to be wonderful. Okay, I'll just deal with that. You know, and what did you say here? So it's, you know, and he starts this whole discussion. It's like, this is the reason you're wrong. Even trust, test me, because you don't know Scripture or the power of God. All right, that's a good phrase to sort of, here I am speaking about proof text, but that's a good phrase to sort of think, you know. You just remind, I remind myself of that, you know. Study, 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 study. Granted, it's my vocation, so it's easier for me to do. You know, and if, you know, find a pastor that you trust. I'm not thinking that's all of you probably have that already, whether you remember, hopefully, if you're a member of my church, you do that. But, you know, who you know is going to give you the good things, is going to, um, you know, draw you into the text and teach you how it's all interrelated and things like that. And they're out there. There's plenty of them. Uh, but, um, you know, don't pick a church because they got good coffee or because uh, uh, one music's, you know, got church, but music's important and stuff. We want it to be good. We have beautiful music at our church and that's not an advertisement, but, you know, um, remember what you're there for. You know, you're there for Christ. And you're there to be given Christ in his purity the gospel in its purity. Okay, I'm already over, so I'll stop because I go on to this for a while. Anyway, let's now, uh, before we go into the litany, as we've been doing, let's say the Apostles' Creed and the Ninth Dominus and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And again, we turn to the litany, and please remember the litany covers every situation we're going to face. It doesn't you know, name people by name, but it covers everything, everything. And just listen for it. Again, this is on page 288 to 289 in the Lutheran Service Book. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us, help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord to rule and govern your holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church and true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord to raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our presidents and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness and their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm going to grab a sip of water before I turn to our hymn. And tonight we're going to sing that wonderful Melanchthon hymn. Kind of fitting because we had our confessions class earlier. And we're going through the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. 
and a wonderful work by Philip Melanchthon, who also gave us this hymn, Lord Jesus Christ with us abide. One of my favorites and many of yours as well. Lord Jesus Christ with us abide, for round us falls the heaving tide. Oh, let your word, that saving light, shine forth undimmed into the night. In these last days of great distress, grant us, dear Lord, true steadfastness that we keep pure till life is spent, your holy word and sacrament. To hope grown dim, to hearts turn cold, speak tongues of fire and make us bold, to shine your word, that saving grace, into each dark and loveless place. May glorious truths that we have heard, the bright sword of your mighty word, spurn Satan that your church be strong, bold unified in act and song. Restrain, O Lord, the human pride, that seeks to thrust your truth aside. For with some man made thoughts or things would dim the words your spirit sings. Stay with us, Lord, and keep us true. Preserve our faith a whole, whole life through. Your word alone, our heart's defense, the church is glorious confidence. That's in its entirety, hymn number 585, Lord Jesus Christ with us abide. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night. Also, supper tomorrow night at 530. Lutheran Women's Missionary League is uh, providing that wonderful meal for us. And then we'll gather in the sanctuary for Lenten evening prayer at 630. God be with you all. Good night.